Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. I'm Brian Warren, and we have a great show ahead today. Thanks for joining us. But first, I want to say a big thank you to Lori for joining us throughout this entire month. Aww, wow. Thanks, Brian. It's been it's been easy. Mm. You're you're just uh, you're the pro here, and uh, I've just followed your lead, and I've truly enjoyed it. I love your heart, and I love how you you truly love the viewers. Well, you know, it's it's, it's mutual. I'm I'm telling you, I I, I really appreciate not only. Uh, the heart of a pastor and what you do with small groups and uh, not only that but you have such a, a down-to-earth way of, of communicating with people oh, and a that. grandmother as well oh, yeah. twice over now twice almost, almost. Number two's coming. it's yeah. coming it's on its yeah. way well you got to keep it real right well we really do yeah so thank you yeah. thank you you know coming up we have an incredible true story of including an amazing story of a paralyzed woman who walks again and dr ken keys is here to explain why it's important to live with gratitude no matter what you're going through mm -hmm. but first six-year-old reagan fell and hit her head which resulted in a major brain trauma she went home 56 days after the accident completely healed watch your miraculous story next February 2nd, 2011 was an unusually calm day on the Bowman Farm in Virginia's Shenandoah Valley. That changed soon after six-year-old Reagan got home from school. Like most days, she had gone out to play in the loft of a storage shed. Every day she went out there and plays with cats and, and she fell and hit her head on the concrete and crawled herself out. My son found her in the driveway and then he picked her up and carried her to my husband. Her parents, Daryl and Tara, saw no signs of serious injury. She was crying, but she would not say anything. And she wasn't bleeding. There was nothing to indicate she was really hurt. To be safe, they called 911. They were stunned when the rescue squad told them she needed to be taken to a local hospital and then medevaced to the University of Virginia Trauma Center in nearby Charlottesville. And that was definitely a tough time watching the helicopter go across the mountain into the horizon over to Charlottesville, knowing that your baby's in that helicopter and you're not, you know. We had a lot of concerns. On the way to UVA, I uh, made like three phone calls to three preachers and kind of told them to pray for us. I really expected to take her over to UVA and be home in a day or two. At the hospital, they learned Reagan had suffered head trauma and was in critical condition. In addition to her severe brain injury, she also had a fracture of her lower left leg. And she had a fracture uh, of her right orbit, so around her right uh, eye. It was very severe. Her injuries were life-threatening. She could have died in the short term, in the acute process. She was laying there with every tube in the world hooked up to her. And they did drill into her skull to check the cranial pressure. Looking at your child lay there is definitely hard. It um, is very hard. You just couldn't believe it. I mean, you just, you know, you just kind of confused and didn't know what to think. The brain injury resulted in uh, swelling of her brain, which progressed rapidly over the first 48 hours. What would have eventually happened is her brain would have seeped out of her ears and then she would have died but i just said god you can't take her yet please don't take her yet they actually eventually had to remove both of her frontal bones uh, in order to allow her brain to have room to swell so that further damage would not occur the bowmans reached out to their community for prayer kids went to the community christian school and the very next day after the accident, they all got around the gym and held hands in a big circle and prayed for. Friends came over and had prayer with us. She came through her surgery just fine, no complications, but we'll not know any effects of her accident until she wakes up from her induced coma. Then the concern would be that she would have such severe long-term brain damage that she would end up with problems with walking, talking, thinking, eating, taking care of herself. Reagan was heavily sedated for three weeks. During that time, the brain swelling went down enough so doctors could replace the bones in her skull. Afterwards, she started physical therapy. Reagan had to relearn to brush her teeth and to walk again. 
and make sure she didn't choke when she would swallow. So we had to teach her how to swallow again and to protect her airway. Every day you could tell that she was getting better. You couldn't keep her down before the accident. She was strong-willed. Then another problem developed. Once her skull was put back in, unfortunately, she developed an infection at the site. And uh, she ended up having to be on several courses of antibiotics to treat that. She ended up having to have the fluid drained out of that area. The Bowmans continued to pray for their little girl's healing. And every night, we prayed over her. And we surrounded the room with, with Christian music and prayers and scripture and spoke the word out loud. Reagan's infection cleared up quickly, and she continued her therapy. She ended up spending less time in rehabilitation than we thought she was going to need to spend in rehabilitation. Her progress was very rapid, more rapid than we typically see with children who have this degree of severity of a brain injury. It was 56 days after the accident, eight weeks, <laughs> that we got to come home on March the 30th. And God didn't leave anything unhealed. Everything was healed completely. That was 2011. Today, as Reagan moves into her teen years, she still shows no sign of long-term effects. I feel perfectly fine. I feel I can do anything. <laughs> We typically would see uh, significant long-term problems with attention, with impulse control problems, language problems. Uh, when you look at the areas of her brain that were injured, and again, it's quite remarkable that uh, she isn't manifesting those difficulties. To finally bring Reagan home and have her walk through the house was just an enormous, happy feeling. Just thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you for letting her walk through that door. I know that God answers prayers because I'm living proof of that. Prayer does work, and the power of prayer was there and healed her completely. God is the great physician. Wow. I love coming to work and seeing what God does on a regular basis. I don't know about you, but it just supercharges my faith and it puts cement in my foundation and steel in my backbone. When I look how God moved in Reagan's life, and I, I, I noted that at the end there, prayer does work and, and that the power of prayer was there to heal her completely and God is the great physician. You know, you may be wondering, can I be healed? Yes, you can be healed. That's what we believe here. And I believe you've tuned in because you believe you can be healed and you have not given up. And I don't think that's you alone, but I believe that is God himself speaking inside of you. You know, the Bible has something very powerful to say, and it, and it tells us in, in Hebrews chapter 4, and it says something, let us therefore be diligent to enter the rest, lest any fall according to the same example. But it also goes on and says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. And I love that in verse 16, the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. You know, mercy is what you do when you throw yourself at the mercy of the court when you don't have any other option. You might be there right now. Can I be healed? Yes, you can. I wanna get something into your hands. But grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. It's something that you do not deserve, but God gives it to you anyway. I want to pray with you right now, but I want you to just believe that God can do what God said according to his word. That's all you have to do, the man size, the woman size. Let God do the God size. And don't ask the question when or how it's going to be done. That's just plain nosy. Let God be God and every man a liar. Amen? Now pray with me and then call the number on the screen. Father, I thank you for your daughter, for your son. And even in this moment, Lord, I, I feel like there's been a heaviness on the head and it's being lifted now. And Father, I feel like there's been a blood disorder. There's been some, some issues. Ah, that's it. And even now, we speak over that that blood disorder, be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. If that's you, one 855 700 Say, Pastor B, it's me. Psh, high five. Up next, the paralyzed woman walks again. See the moment of the miracle for yourself.
The man I've been working with was on his knees above my body, but on each side of him was a huge angel. He seemed to just emerge through the door and floated out on, on the ground. She started pointing, and she was saying, monster. Discover the truth in Pat Robertson's latest DVD, Angels, Their Power, Purpose, and Presence. These magnificent beings have awesome power beyond our comprehension. In this DVD, you'll gain biblical insight into these mysterious creatures. Learn their purpose in God's kingdom and their role in your life. Plus, meet people who've had real encounters with angels. God sent an angel to pull Lisa out of that car. You're going to be a believer by the time this is finished. Call now to get your copy of Angels. Available now. There's a whole lot that I don't recall specifically, but I know this, the car vehicle was upside down and they were trying to get me out and there was music playing in my head. On a snowy Christmas day in 1987, Dahlia Knox was in a car with her sister and brother-in-law when they were hit by a drunk driver. I was semi-conscious, then I went unconscious. And so then I woke up in the hospital. Although the others escaped with minor injuries, the crash left Dahlia paralyzed from the waist down. Doctors told her she would likely be confined to a wheelchair the rest of her life. From there on, I had to, I mean, I went through, like, what do I do from here now? Where do I go from here? Dahlia was determined to live her life. An accomplished gospel singer, she continued her work in music ministry, but her life was hard. I would continue to go and sing, and I would push myself, you know, into the restroom or the shower, or whatever, and then I would drag myself into the car, and I would push myself. It was one of those things where you had to drag yourself, you had to push yourself. Dahlia believed God would heal her as people prayed constantly for her. But after a decade passed with no changes, she started to lose hope. I didn't like going to altar calls because every time I would go somewhere, the service would change to a healing service and somebody would try to pull me out of the chair and I've been plopped, dropped, flopped and flipped and you know, to the point where I was like, I just can't go through that anymore. While attending a Christian conference, she was captivated by one of the speakers, Bishop Levy Knox. It was so amazing because he didn't see the wheelchair, he saw beyond the wheelchair. He later became her husband and a major source of inspiration for Dahlia. I remember him taking me in front of the mirror at home um, and holding me up and, and just say, I want you to see yourself standing. He would take me and dance with me and just, you know, as my legs would dangle, he would take me around. And he was one that always continuously tried to put hope and faith in me as to think beyond that, even though at times I was frustrated about it. By 2010, Dahlia had been in a wheelchair for over 22 years. In August, she and her husband attended a conference hosted by evangelist Nathan Morris. The evangelist went up and he started speaking on healing and all that. Had I known it was a healing service, I have to be honest, I would have never gone. She was at the front of the church with her husband when Pastor Morris started praying for her. Here I am confined for 22 and a half years in this wheelchair. And for the first time in the longest time, I find myself that something could possibly really be happening. I said, I'm feeling something in my legs. The power of God is all over this sister right now. She normally has no feelings, but she she can feel our hands on her, our hands on her legs. And she's had no I had to get to the heart of it. And the heart of it was, are you willing to risk your pride and take a step of faith, even if you fall? With the assistance of her husband, Elia slowly rose. She later stumbled and sat back down, fighting to block out the doubts flooding her mind. I remember the words that he prayed were, let faith arise in this woman of God. In Hebrews 11, faith is in the present and the now. It's standing between two present terms. Now, faith is. 
And I sat there and a righteous indignation came in me. A righteous anger came in me. I just said to them, I just said, just worship, just worship, just worship, because I wanted to drown everything that was going out, out, out. I just, just worship, just right, worship, worship, worship. Then her husband and Pastor Morris helped her back on her feet. She took a few steps on her own. Then as the congregation sang and prayed, Dahlia started walking around the church. Paraplegic will tell you that you can move on your hips. And so I thought, was I moving on my hips? I just started moving my knees up and down and I started bouncing on my knees. It was like the awakening. This is really happening. She began to take those steps and began to walk. It was like the word the word that had already been spoken, uh, beholding the word, uh, hearing the word, and now the manifestation of the promises of God was being fulfilled right before our eyes. It was phenomenal, it was, it was life-changing for us. Over the following weeks, she says God began to strengthen her legs. Three weeks later, she walked in front of her own congregation for the first time. Today, Dahlia leads worship at Living Word Christian Church in Mobile where her husband is the pastor. She also dances with him every chance she gets. The miracle is the journey, is not the moment. It's the journey of recognizing who God is. If he would have never healed me, I would still be pushing through to get into his face. Because it's not about the healing, it's about the journey of knowing that God is there for us. Talk about perseverance. Oh, oh my goodness. What an incredible story. Yeah. She said I was flopped, dropped, I was prayed for, and I right. didn't want one more opportunity for this. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. Here we go again. And I just love when she said the miracle is the journey, it wasn't the moment. Yes. You know that she said even if God had not healed her in that moment, she was going to keep seeking him. She was going to keep pressing in. Yes. And I just love that. She said, you know, it's about the journey of knowing that God is there for us. It's a powerful story of deliverance. Oh. Yeah. And, and, and you know, um, God works in wonderful and mysterious ways because what I've learned uh, through not only pastoring but also working in deliverance, that there is the gift of healing and, uh, and that comes with the, the word of knowledge and, and God gives that and over time you see the fullness of that word played out. And then there's the miracle of hearing, healing, and that happens in the moment. Right. And right. all of the symptoms break off. Yeah, right? yeah. So I liken it as a pastor. I liken it to like there's microwave ministry. Yes. You know, it's deliverance, man. It's yes. just like bam, right? and we've wow. dealt with this. Stuff. And then there's slow cooker ministry. Yes. And I'm in slow cooker <laughs> ministry most of the time, right? where it's like this journey of discipleship. I love that. Yeah. This journey of trusting, and I yes. just saw both in her story happen here. Absolutely. And it reminded me too of that. I thought I was literally literally watching when I watched her get out of that wheelchair, the story yeah. of the woman in Luke 13, yes. where who had she, for 18 years, yes. she had been bent over yes. by an evil spirit, because yes. Jesus said this for, she's been 18 years yes. by this evil spirit. And then, you know, she was set free and delivered and able to stand up and walk. I yeah. mean, what a visual in, in uh, this That's story Delia today. Knox. And it's a, yeah. also a, a love story because her husband was still dancing oh, with her yeah. when, when she wasn't, you know, able so to walk. Good. And he said, I love you anyway baby yeah. let's pray for someone right now and maybe they need that faith to rise up just like that woman for 18 yeah, years yeah, absolutely well Jesus we pray now in your powerful name that you would raise up and touch uh, a person's body that's even listening today that needs his healing, that they would just call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They would experience healing. They would rise up and walk, that you would release. And we say in Jesus' name, in Jesus we name. cast out any demonic spirit that has a crippling, yeah. that is holding down, that is disabling someone from rising up. We pray that Jesus, you would deliver them in your powerful name. Amen. Amen. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. If you heard it, now act on it. Call the number on the screen, one 855 700 and receive that healing. Ask for faith, and we will give that to you. And up next, life coach and speaker Dr. Ken Keyes has an important message about gratitude. Mm -hmm. Join us September 10th through the 14th for our Let's Pray for Canada special week of prayer. 
God is at work in this nation and is accomplishing mighty things around us, and God is also at work in your life. Nothing is impossible for Him. Look for this mailing, fill it out, and send it back with your prayer requests, or call us at 1-855-759-0700. And continue to pray for Canada. Great things happen when we join together to pray. What's your gratitude level? Are you thankful for things around you? In a recent study, a secular study, they looked at all these character traits and they were trying to identify what character traits created well-being in individuals. Do you know what the number one character trait that contributed to well-being? It was thankfulness. It was being grateful. So do you have a grateful heart? Are you thankful for all the things that are in your life? So when we think about scripture in the Amplified uh, Bible, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, in every situation, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continually give thanks to God. You know, when we're in praise, when we're thankful, you actually can't be in the negative. You can't have fear and faith coexisting. So thankfulness really changes our energy. In Colossians 3.16, it says really talks about what's your focus. You know, be focused on thankfulness. Psalms 107.1, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His compassion and loving kindness endures, endures forever. So my question for you, all of us have stuff that happen. All of us have events that can occur to us. But what is it that we can be thankful for? If the secular world is teaching this, and we have people from Eastern religions that are teaching this, then why aren't we embracing it? Because really, biblically, that's what God talks about. In everything, give thanks. Now, there is a clarification here. We, if we have a storm in life, we don't give thanks for the storm, we give thanks in the storm. There's a big difference on that. So if there's something that's going on that is negative, then what is it that you are thankful for? And what happens is, now the research is showing, is that the biochemistry in our body changes, it shifts. You know, the enemy really can attack you with fear and worry if you're thankful. So even if there's lots of negative things going on, my challenge for you today is what is it that you are thankful for? What, is it, what are the things that you can? It says, well, I have my health. I'm here. I have uh, some friends. My, the question is, is not to measure what you, the level of thankfulness or all the negativity. But once you start focusing on what your gratitude is and you move in this statement or this place, pardon me, of praise, then you will feel and start feeling better. It is a choice. It is a conscious choice. And so when you think about your friends, what would they say about you? Are you thankful or not? Are you grateful or not? I'm Dr. Ken Keyes. operation, brain tumors, and also uh, after Power. a car accident, Absolutely. paralyzed woman walks again. And, and you know, it just struck me that there, there was a journey of healing yes. for, for each one of these stories. And I, I just want to remind people, while you're waiting for the healing, seek the healer. Yes. Seek the healer. And he, the healer is with you in your journey of healing. That's good. That is so good. I wish I would have said that too. <laughs> but you know what? We really appreciate you joining us each week. And we can't do this without you. We believe that the mandate on the 700 Club Canada is so great that we want you to partner with us. Would you link arms for just $20 a month? And as our thank you, we will send this out to you, angels. And it allows you to understand the mission and also the very power behind these angelic hosts. Pat Robertson does a great job, and it would be such an encouragement if you'd call now.
out. Yeah, so call 1-855-759-0700. Our prayer partners are standing by to serve you. Mm -hmm. And thank you for your prayer request as well as your praise reports. You know, we get something that's uh, pretty interesting. Colin. Edna, Cody. Vina, Evelyn, Ruth, and Alex, and many more, yes. all called in for healing. For healing. And we believe that God is doing something right now. Let's pray for that. I, I want to give you a word first. Jeremiah one twelve. it says, the Lord said, you have seen me. You have said, uh, seen correctly. And he says, I am ready to perform my word. Mm. I believe it's time. Yeah. Amen. Well, we pray to that. We yes. ask you, Father, that people would see your healing, yeah. that they would look to you as their healer, and that you would perform a healing in their life, in their mind, in their body, in their emotions, in their will. Yeah. We welcome your kingdom to come and your will to be done in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, I just feel like there's a shalom, there's a peace coming upon your people right now from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Oh, Yes, eyes have been just opened. In Jesus' name, we receive it on their behalf. Amen. Amen. Well, if that's you, call the number on the screen. It's going to be up even after the program is over. And we really appreciate coming into your homes and joining you during this time. And we believe that God is up to something right now. And it's something that we have not seen before. I really believe that something's great right around the corner. Yeah, I believe that too, Brian. I think that uh, maybe our desperation for God is heightening in this culture, yes. in the troubles that we have in this world. And, and you know what? It, when our desperation heightens, yes. then we look to God. Well, you're right. You know, uh, desperate people get healed. Thirsty yeah. people get filled. Right. And I believe because of the, what's happening in our courts, what's happening in our government, what's happening in our schools, God is now moving because it's a climate, it's a culture for the miraculous. Absolutely, we have an opportunity. Let me leave you with this verse, Matthew 15, 30. Great crowds came to him, bringing the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others. And laid them at his feet, and he healed them. Amen. Hey, he's still healing. Until next time, God bless. Have a great day. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram. On tomorrow's show. I believe in prayer because when we pray in agreement, that's when it begins to move for us on our behalf. During my accident, people were praying for a miracle and uh, God performed the miracle. A Florida intersection marked the start of Matthew Maloney's painful but miraculous journey. On a 2015 Orange Park summer day, the then 18-year-old cross-country runner slowed his stride to pause at a stoplight.